Long distance travel has been made more convenient and fast through the airplane flights which entails spending only about hours in the air. While this could be very convenient going through places from one country to another or one continent to another, the speed the airplane travels may be just too slow when traveling space. Since we are talking about traversing outer space, we need to travel faster since all the points are light years away. Space explorers have devoted their life looking for ways on how to travel faster than light so they can explore more discoveries deep in the space. However, the limitations of the methods they have yet discovered have hindered them to fully explore more than what they did over the years. It is to our awe that scientists have found a new way to speed up the travel time in outer space. Is it really possible? Do we have the resources to make it? Can this theoretical discovery come to light sooner than ever? Ride in as we try to envision the future of space travel, a speed of which travels faster than light. Light, as omnipresent in the universe and on Earth, is very vital in all endeavors of human life. Imagine living your day without it. It would definitely be a chaos as we don't get to see things and so would run into objects. Thanks to natural light coming from the sun and to the artificial lights that humans have invented to serve us better, especially during the night. While we have regarded light as one that enables us to see things, one more characteristic that it has is how fast it travels. Interestingly, the exact speed of light is known and is the basis for most other measurements. The speed of light travels in a vacuum in exactly 299,792,458 meters or 983,571,056 feet per second. This means light can travel for about 186,282 miles in just one second. To give us the perfect and practical narrative to how fast light travels, try switching on a bulb in a dark room. You wouldn't notice how the light travels through the room as it instantly fills the whole room with brightness. Another unit of measurement involving light is the light year. Light year is the distance that light can travel in one year which is about 6 trillion miles or 10 trillion kilometers. It is one way how astronomers and physicists measure vast distances across the universe. Knowing how vast the universe is, it would take many light years to travel from one part of the space to another. To better illustrate this, light travels from the moon to our eyes in about one second, meaning the moon is about one light second away. This isn't true in sunlight which takes longer. It approximately takes about 8 minutes to reach our eyes, meaning the sun is about 8 light minutes away. Moreover, light from Alpha Centauri, the nearest star system to our own, roughly requires 4.3 years to travel from our system. It means Alpha Centauri is 4.3 light years away. Other stars and objects beyond our solar system lie anywhere from a few light years to a few billion light years away. Imagine how far that could be for our astronomers to actually see them. It's literally worth living the history. This only means that when they study objects that are far away, they are seeing light that shows the objects as they existed as the time that light left them. While there are many other fascinating things about light, scientists have been trying to find a way to travel at the speed of light. This is interesting as humans can become an interplanetary species, not just mere explorers of the outer space. SpaceX billionaire CEO Elon Musk has long wanted to form a settlement on Mars, but the space explorers have to bear at least 5 months to a maximum of almost a year of travel through space before touching down the red planet. However, with the speed of light travel, they can, as per the expectations, make the long trip in less than 4 minutes. Researchers have tried many different methods to achieve this rather ambitious travel at a very high speed. The challenge of most methods relies on the energy which makes it almost impossible to achieve the travel in the speed of light. Relating it to physics, any object moving has energy due to its motion and physicists call this kinetic energy. To go faster, you need to increase kinetic energy, yet it takes a lot of kinetic energy to increase speed. 
it would entail at least four times the energy for something to move twice as fast. The computation goes on. For example, a teenager who weighs 110 pounds can travel to just 1% of the speed of light if he has 200 trillion joules. And that amount of energy is roughly the same amount 2 million people use in the US in a single day. Technology-wise, let's look at the EM drive, which was believed as the technology that would take us to the most distant parts of the universe very fast. This invention, which has even been patented, theoretically works by trapping microwaves in a shaped chamber where their bouncing produces thrust. The chamber is so close so it appears to simply move without any fuel input or any thrust output. EM drives relies on Newton's second law, which states that force is defined as the rate of change of momentum. Thus, an electromagnetic or EM wave traveling at the speed of light has a certain momentum that will transfer to a reflector, resulting to a tiny force. This accumulated tiny force in great quantity would enable the EM drive. Since the chamber is closed, no energy is going in or coming out. The questions raised then revolve around how the waves are initialized, how do they keep moving, and where their momentum is coming from. It is a basic knowledge in physics that you can't have spontaneous momentum without an explicable push. Without clear explanation to this, many scientists do not take the EM drive seriously. It was even put to the test by physicists at the Dresden University of Technology that showed the promising results obtained by NASA. Another discovery was marked when Dr. Eric Lentz, a physicist with over 10 years of experience in practical applications, experimented on the warp drive which shows great promises. The first person to attempt making a warp drive a reality was the Mexican mathematician, Miguel Alcubierre, who did his proposal in 1994. However, his endeavor failed since the Alcubier warp drive necessitates an overwhelming amount of energy along with the dreaded exotic matter as a co-ingredient. This highly radioactive stuff is only theoretical since researchers have not actually observed this in nature, much less created. Many variations have been suggested since. This includes a 2010 update to the Alcubier drive's physical design made by former NASA engineer Dr. Harold G. White. His update reduced the amount of energy needed to a lesser number, but still requires exotic matter lesser than that of the Alcubierre solution, yet it still remains impractical. Another group of researchers from Switzerland known as Applied Physics APL, came up with their own concept which does not use any exotic material to create warp bubble. However, their model could not go beyond the speed of light an invention far from the holy grail of space travel. To explain how his concept is different from those already proposed, Lentz stated that the Alcubierre solution provides an intuitive picture of what a warp drive would do, that is, to contract the space immediately in front of the central region containing the ship or transport and expand the space immediately behind. This shows that the warp drive can be a wave of curvature on which a ship will ride to its destination. Even though it is the cornerstone of warp travel, Lenz argues it is not even the essential feature, as showed by the solution proposed by physicist Jose Natario in 2002, that the expansion and contraction weren't necessary to transport the ship forward. His work prompted him to generate an innovation on the warp using traditional matter instead of exotic matter. Natario was able to prove that the expansion could be trivial or zero everywhere and still perform the same task of transporting a ship. This is significant breakthrough in the quest of faster space travel because it means that exotic matter that warps the space in front of the theoretical passenger and behind them in nearly all theoretical warp drive solutions is no longer needed. Building on Atario's theory, Lenz created his own variation rooted in conventional physics, which for him is more viable. Aside from this key material difference, Lenz made his variation different based on how the energy is placed around the warp bubble. In the Alcubierre solution, the energy density and curvatures are maximally separated, with the energy being restricted to a small torus between the regions of high contraction and expansion. On the other hand, the curvatures and sources are highly correlated in Lenz's proposal, with the regions of high energy density and high expansion and contraction overlapping almost exactly. 
It is these geometric distinctions that make Lens' proposal a potentially more viable warp solution than those previously proposed. Yet, we have to keep in mind that Lens warp drive is still completely theoretical, no matter how promising it is. However, he stated that reducing the amount of energy needed in order to run the warp can make this theoretical discovery into reality. His next step, however, is to make a warp bubble capable of moving at 1% of the speed of light using a modern-day fission reactor. Lenz admitted that his version and the different updates on the field of warp drive are but a larger endeavor to make, yet he showed his excitement to see how much progress has recently been made in the field of warp drive. He believes many more advances are to be made in the coming years. Let's know what you think of the quest for speed of light travel in the comments section down below. Can this theoretical discovery come to light sooner than ever? Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.